family gets awfully cross when I wake them up, but if it happens accidentally, there's nothing they can do about it, is there? No, I guess not. <laughs> Bang. Hey, what's going on down there? Sorry, dear, the milk just came. It's time to get up anyway, Phil. Oh, all right. Thank you very much, Harold. You're welcome. Knuckles on the floor. Twenty. Five more than yesterday. 
flatter than Kansas. How's my girl? That's mine. Are you headed for a wedding? Midge. Oh, no, no, not again. My, my goodness. It's not more than what, two months since you bought those, is it? Did she do it deliberately? No, dear. She's six years old. Well, we'll dig down. We'll find the dough somewhere. Uh, sweetie, look, you think, uh, you think I can uh, skip shaving this Get morning? Get into that bathroom. I'm hurry. Gave it to the man to fix. Well, dust and stuff yeah. blows in. But down the window. Well, I'll suffocate. Oh, dear, put it down halfway. See? Gee, Dad, ain't you through yet? Not ain't, aren't? Well, ain't or aren't, I'm still not through. But you'd better brush your teeth with the sink downstairs. And, Diane, get the children started on their breakfast. Oh, oh and, dear, take Midge's best shoes down to her, will you? So the last time somebody watched me shave, I cut my throat from ear to ear, and I had to replace my head. Oh, the new one's perfectly lovely. And, dear, don't forget to leave me three dollars. The man's bringing the screen back this afternoon. Three bucks for one little wired screen? Well, you know how everything's gone up. Yeah, everything, except my salary. Well, I'll pay you back out of next month's house money. Oh, you will, huh? <laughs> well, let's see, that makes about twelve hundred and three dollars you owe me out of... Next month's house money in the last 19 years, plus interest at 6%. Philip Baxter, you talk as though you don't trust me. Darling, I trust you. I trust you with my life, my honor, my future, but not with three bucks. For the simple reason, I haven't got it. I haven't got three dollars, but you're wiping your razor on a five dollar bill. On a five dollar bill? That's not mine. I... Oh, Bill, you're teasing me. Honestly, Polly, I busted my last five dollar bill yesterday buying gas. I could the window blow in the Is that where it came from? Well, I don't know where it came from, but I know where it's going. The pay for the screen. And there'll be enough left over so Diane can go to the cafeteria the rest of the week. But now wait a minute. That that money belongs to somebody. That isn't ours, honey. Well, you it can't blew in our window, didn't it? Into our bathroom. Anyway, how could anybody identify it? I think there's a picture of George. Of Lincoln on the front of it? This is heaven sent, Bill. And I'm not going to let you get noble and stuffy about it either. Oh, so you've gone for your house money again this month, too, huh? That has nothing to do with it. Besides, what's the difference? Today's payday. And tonight, our little monthly budget hassle, too. Oh. We'll tackle it right after dinner. And honey, honey, you fix a good, substantial meal, so I'll have the fortitude to face your extraordinary bookkeeping. You're a bully and a stinker, and I love you. Oh, <laughs> And a, and a mother and a very pretty woman. So I suppose it's too much to expect you to be able to add figures. Now, let's see here. Thank you, honey. Milk, $8. $8? That, that's good. That's better than what no, you dear, did last. That's $18. The one sort of ran into the K in milk. $18? That's an awful lot of money for milk. Who bathes in it around here? We have three growing children, all of whom drink it. It's good for them. It keeps them healthy, and it's fine for their teeth. Fine for their teeth, and will you please explain this? Flip, dental care, $25. Doesn't the milk work on our son? That was for adjusting his braces. But what does it matter if a boy's teeth aren't quite straight? He won't have to catch a rich husband someday, will he? Well, a rich wife, maybe. But with his teeth? Bill. Honey, I'm sorry to bark at you. It's only that I make so little. I want us to get some money ahead. So for I know, goodness sake. I know. So you can open your own accounting office. We'll make it one of these days. Judas on a raft. What's this? What's what? Nursery. 
ten dollars nursery. What? Polly, don't tell me. I'd, I, I'd get oh, to it. Oh, of course not. Oh, silly. No. No. That, that's Mr. McGonagall, the nursery man, the man who sells me my plants. We can't afford necessities and you buy plants? Well, they're, they're not plants, dear. They're trees. Uh, why have I? I thought you noticed them. Well, I haven't. What kind of tree costs ten bucks? Well, there are two of them, dear. They only cost five dollars a piece, and that's terribly, terribly cheap for trees, Phil. Is, oh, what kind are they? Kind? There are all kinds of trees. Every tree is a different kind. Well, uh, I don't know exactly. Mr. McGonagall didn't know either. They got into a shipment by mistake, and that's why I got them so cheap. Two anonymous trees, ten hard-earned bucks. Honestly, Look, honey, will you do me a favor? Of course, dear. What? Will you stop buying things just because they're cheap? In the long run, they cost more. In this life, sweetie, you just don't get something for nothing. What you do, Phil, every once in a while, the most wonderful things just seem to drop out of the blue. Well, those two trees dropped out of the blue right into our budget. It's just as though I bought things for myself. They're for all of us. And they're beautiful. And you know how I need to see things grow. What about needing to see our bankroll grow? What about our getting some money ahead for a change? What about... Pop, Pop what about us going to the movies tonight? <sighs> Here. Ralph's coming over to take Diane. Can't we go, too? I'm afraid not, Flip. We simply can't afford it. You might explain to him, dear, we can't see the movies for the trees. Oh, very funny. Why don't you put on the radio? There must be some good programs on. It keeps fading. You can't hear it good. Hey, Ralph says it needs a new condenser. And why don't we get one? Because we simply can't... What is Casanova brought into the house now? Tracy, what have you got there? What have you got? Let me have it. Ouch! Hmm. If Casanova scratches like that, she's not safe for you, Midge. I wish you'd stop calling Casanova she. Phil. What is it, sir? It's a ten-dollar bill. Casanova had it. Casanova? Hey, doesn't anybody answer the doorbell around here? Where's my date? In here, Ralph. Hey, you better get your things on. We'll miss the first show. Is anything wrong? Look what the cat dragged in. Ralph, uh, take a look at this bill. As a bank teller, you ought to know. Is that okay? Is that a good bill? I wish I had a bushel of them. What's it all about? Casanova brought it, too, so we could all go to the movies. Come on, drag along. Get your clothes. Uh, kids, kids, now wait just a minute. Uh, if this bill is good, we have to give it back. Back you... to who? Well, how do we know who it is? Find the keepers, losers, weepers. It's Casanova's money. It isn't anybody's money. It came to us because we needed it. Oh, uh, Polly, really, Lord, honestly. we needed money for the screen and we got it. Now we need money for midget shoes and a little entertainment tonight, so there it is. My wife still believes in fairy tales. Of course I do, Philip Baxter. And it's high time life caught up with fairy tales. <laughs> Come on, children, the movie! Yay! Yay! Then put on your, your red dress and wash your hands. I did! We saw Francis, that new picture. The children just loved it. Casanova, good morning. I'll have your breakfast in a minute. Oh, Phil, look. The mums opened up during the night. Well, good for them. Here. Oh. Hey, aren't those the uh, nameless trees? Yes. Aren't they, darling, dear? I'd say they're uh, dear, darling. <laughs> oh, now, Phil, you have to admit they're pretty. Hey, maybe next door, if they're uh, big enough, we can string a hammock between them. Then getting them wasn't such a bad idea, was it? Well, no, honey. Phil, it was a good idea. We needed some shade out here. Yeah. I gotta run. Have a good day, dear. Hope so. Good morning, Mrs. Pryor. Well, your husband just going to work. My Jim's still asleep. Well, that comes of being his own boss, I suppose. Yeah, he didn't roll into almost two this morning. He 
said, he has a lot of work piled up. Oh, Miss Baxter, uh, uh, Jim forgot to stop at the store. I wonder if you could spare me some sugar. Goodbye, dear. Goodbye. Well, um, you, you don't mind helping yourself, do you? Mm. Oh, uh, I'm kind of short of butter, too. I wonder if you could spare me a smidgen. Well, just a tiny smidgen. My, your garden looks real pretty. The only time I ever see flowers is around Easter when Jim brings me a potted plant. If he ain't too potted himself to remember. was a full quarter pound of butter. I'll get it, Mother. Oh, why do you let her get away with it? Come on, Hester. Well, well, woman is an outright thief. Oh, I don't know, dear. She probably has kleptomania. Who was that on the phone, Diane? Our class secretary. I have bad news. What's wrong? I've been made one of the officials of the class dance. Well, that's good news. No, it's going to be formal. And I haven't a thing to wear. What about your blue with the silver trim? That old thing. The silver's tarnished and it's much too tight. Bill, couldn't we take... Oh, no, Polly. Now, let me finish, dear. Couldn't we take a little out of the Christmas fund? It's still I said no, away. Polly. Oh, I saw the loveliest little frock at least for only... No, 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 no. No, no. Now, we are not going to take money out of the Christmas fund. That makes me a tyrant, I suppose. And, and from now on, we are not going to talk about buying things for a very simple reason. We haven't any money to buy things with. We're not even going to talk about money. I'm, I'm sick of the subject. I'll take $19, please. Mitch, I just said that there were... What are you doing? Playing store. I'm Mr. Burns, the grocery man. And I take all the money. See? <laughs> $35. This is not play money, honey. This is real money. Where'd you get it? I found it. Where did you find it? Oh, outside. Yes, but where outside? Outside, outside. Now, can't you remember oh, just where you... But there's she too little to remember just where. Yesterday morning, $5 blows into our bathroom. Last night, the cat shows up with 10 more. Now, our daughter finds 35 Whose money is this? Ours. It's what I said yesterday. We needed it, so it's here. It'll buy Diane's dress and there'll be enough left over for shoes Polly, to match. Polly, Polly, it is not ours. We've got to try to find the, the, the rightful owner and give it back. So, in the morning, on my way to work, I'll stop at the police station and I'll turn this in. And I suppose since you're so disgustingly honest, you want to give back the other $15, too. Well, that must have come from the same source, so I'll include it. Yes. But we've already spent it. Then it'll have to come out of your house money. Oh, really, when we need money for Polly, so Polly, we can do without a lot of things, but these things we hold on to, our integrity and our self-respect. Now, we just don't spend money. We haven't come by legitimately. What you're doing, Philip Baxter, is practically snatching a dress off your daughter's back. It's almost indecent. We'll drop this discussion right now. How much money have we in the Christmas fund? Thanks, darling. Phil! Phil, not that way! Oh. Phil, 
not that way. At the root. You ought to know better than that. The bugs might fall off. Oh. <laughs> Are you chewing gum? Yeah, you want some? Fresh. Look, after you've watered both trees, will you please hold down the driveway? Wrong man, honey, wrong man. I'm resting on my merit badge. What are you talking about? My good deed of yesterday. Honey, you should have seen that police sergeant's face when I took in that 50 bucks. His jaw dropped a full two feet. He probably thought you were crazy. He thought I was a good citizen, and he said so. What's more, I'll bet you that somebody reports the loss of that, though. Probably be somebody that needs it very badly. I'm ready. I'll be right up. Don't forget the driveway. <laughs> After that, honey, I'll do the laundry and bake us a cake. Hi. Hi. Is this 814 Larrabee? Yeah. Are you the man that turned in that money at the station yesterday? I am. Well, we just stopped by to let you know it's been claimed. Oh, good. I was just telling my wife that would happen. Uh, someone that needed it, I bet. Huh? Sure looked like it. We never saw anyone so relieved to find the dough there. It's probably someone from right here in the neighborhood. Huh? Did they uh, leave any name? Bill, that uh, flustered dame who picked up the dough, what was her name? Uh, Mrs. Polly Baxter. Mrs. Polly Baxter. Mrs. Polly Baxter. I'll be seeing you. Hey, Mother, there's a police car backing out of our driveway. What's it doing here? Is his father in trouble? Not father. Polly, come down here. Polly, at once. I'm here. Why did you go to the... Because it's ours. That's insane. We found it, Midge, Casanova, and you. That is not only muddled thinking, but completely dishonest. And we need it very, very badly. There's some things I didn't Now want I'll to have tell to you. go to the police and tell them my wife is a thief. I didn't want to tell you because you're already I'll so have worried to about money. to them that my wife, my own didn't wife, want to is tell nothing you, but, but just... The doctor said Midge has to have her tonsils out and her adenoids out this coming week. And I thought that $50 would help pay the doctor. And I'm so sick, sick, sick of scrimping and being afraid to spend a nickel. And if it's a crime to see that your sick child gets well and not to worry your husband, whom you love, although he doesn't appreciate it, about money which he hasn't got and can't get, then I'm a thief and you can throw me in jail and let me rot there. But the minute I get out, I'll do it all over oh, again. No, honey, all I you just... do is stand there and say horrid things to me when I'm only trying to help out, when all my thoughts are for you and our children, and when I see the look on your face oh. and night and the shine on your pants, I could just no. die. No, no, don't cry, love. Oh, it wasn't brought... wrong. And even if it was, it was still wrong. Now, we've always talked these things over, honey. Don't, don't listen, sweetie. Now, 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 darling. Please, you shouldn't. Oh, Polly, don't. Ten dollars. Oh, no. Oh, no, no. Falling out of that airplane. Although with all the doors and the windows sealed, how could money have fallen out? I could call the airport, I suppose. Now, I can use a new pair of pants and we can put some money back in the Christmas right. pot. Now, now, Polly, oh, now, Phil, don't you start that again. Now, now, we can't oh, expect no, to keep you it. don't. Oh. Oh, oh, go. Go to the police and tell them this time the money fell out of heaven. They'll lock you up. And I'll swear you've been acting strangely, which is the absolute truth. I'll phone the airport. <laughs>
plane had just landed. Nobody dropped money from it. Oh, Phil, I have something to tell you. And I have something to tell you. Polly, you are not to spend any of that money. That is an order. But, but Midget's tonsils. We'll borrow on our insurance. Well, certainly no one is throwing money away. People just don't do that. If they did, why should they throw it our way? Have you heard of anyone else finding money? Polly, are you listening? Were you talking, dear? For the last ten minutes. I just asked you if you'd heard of anyone else finding money. Oh, no, they couldn't have. Why couldn't they have? Well, because I, I probably would have heard about it. Well, so since you didn't fall out of the skies, and good night, sweetie. And the streets aren't paid for this stuff. And maybe we'll give it to some charity or something. Suppose it did, Phil. Suppose who did what? What you said. Suppose it did fall from out the skies or something. What are you talking about? What you were talking about. Money. From heaven or, well, growing on trees, let's say. Could we spend it? Of course not. Look, honey, I have to get up early tomorrow and go to work. But why couldn't we spend it? Because it wouldn't be money issued by the government of the United States. It wouldn't be backed up by gold or silver reserves. Now, will you go to sleep? But if it looked like the government had issued it, suppose you couldn't Must tell it. Must we talk this nonsense in the dead of night? Dead of night? It's only a quarter past ten. Phil, if it were a sort of a gift from above, because we well, need Well, then it, it should so be destroyed. But why? Because... This is a heck of a time to have to give you a lesson in economics. Because such odd money could upset the monetary balance of the country. It could create inflation. It could cause a lot of trouble for a lot of people. Well, I don't see why. It wouldn't be legal. That's why. Now, will you please shut up and go to sleep? Phil, are peaches legal? What have peaches got to do with it? Yelling, you wake up the children. I merely ask you a perfectly reasonable question. If someone grew peaches and sold them and got money for them, the government wouldn't object, would they? It would be an exchange, wouldn't it? So why should they object if someone found or grew money and exchanged it for peaches? It's the same thing the other way around, isn't it? Isn't it, Phil? Phil, what's the name of the Secretary of the Treasury? Good morning, Mr. Murchison. Good morning, Miss Reed. This should go to the Secretary himself. I think it needs his personal attention. Mm -hmm. Oh, and send this statement to Internal Revenue. I don't know how I got here in the first place. <laughs> oh, by the way, Miss Reed, my anniversary is Thursday, and if I forget it, my wife will have my scalp. Mrs. Murchison has already found to remind me. Well, she has? Well, then there's no flowers this year. Mm -hmm. Means my bank account takes a severe beating. Why is it, Miss Reed, that you women have the whimsical notion that, well, that money grows on trees? <laughs> because it does. At least on Mrs. Baxter's trees. What are you talking about? This woman in Connecticut. She has two of them. She's already spent some. Only now she's not sure she should have. 12.30, Finley. Haven't forgotten our luncheon date, have you? I'll be right with you, boys. She spent some of what, Miss Reed? Of the money that grows on her trees. What's this? Money on trees? Uh, something for the book, I think, boys. <laughs> Read that letter to us, please. <clears throat> Dear Mr. Secretary, in my backyard, I have two trees that grow money. <laughs> that letter belongs to the Department of Agriculture. Let me have it. Well, uh, let's hear the rest of it first, huh? The one planted nearest the garage in the shade produces $5 bills. The other, which gets the full sun, grows $10 bills. I have already used some of the money to get our radio fixed. However, now I'm a little unsure since my husband, who is the soul of honor, says that money which grows on trees is not legal. Is it? <laughs> it's an interesting question. I would appreciate your opinion on this matter, since if it is legal, we need so many things, it would be a real blessing. Could you answer, please, by return mail, 
Anxiously yours, Mrs. Philip Baxter. <laughs> On second thought, my department doesn't want that letter. <laughs> it's a hot potato. Agriculture only deals with them in the raw. You all should answer that letter, Finley, as a servant of the people, it's your duty to reply. Let's have some lunch, boys. Gentlemen, there's a postscript. P.S. I'm not trying to influence your judgment, Mr. Secretary, but I think you should know that I voted for your party at the last election, which helped put you in office. You see, Finley, I told you you should answer the letter. <laughs> right you are. Well, since she belongs to our club, boys, I agree with you. She deserves an answer. <laughs> Take a letter, Miss Reed. My dear Mrs... Baxter. Mrs. Baxter. Your letter to the Secretary of the Treasury has come to my attention, and since he is an extremely busy man at this time, I am replying for him. Paragraph. If you are in possession of trees which grow the currency of our country and meets all its standards, it is my opinion that your strange fruit is perfectly legal. <laughs> How can you tell her that? Now, you weren't listening. If her tree money meets all the standards of our currency, now what's wrong with that? Well, nothing wrong. Couldn't possibly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't quite know how you should file your income tax return, Mrs. Baxter, but I'm sure if you will write Mr. John Leatherby of the Department of Internal Revenue... Now, here, here, you lay off my department. He will give you that information. <laughs> <laughs> if uh, you bought these trees or grew them from seed which you purchased, you will probably have to pay only a capital gains tax. Oh, oh sh yes, that sounds reasonable. <laughs> You should also write Mr. Carrollman of the Department of Agriculture and ask him what fertilizer will hasten the productivity of your trees. You all tell her to use a good steer manure, Henry. <laughs> hey, include me out of this. Yeah, but you want it in, remember? <laughs> now, if you would uh, send us some cuttings from your trees, Mrs. Baxter, we could plant them in the backyard of the White House. This would please the President, since he would no longer have to send budget requests to Congress, a procedure which he frequently finds very discouraging. <laughs> Thanking you in advance, I remain yours respectfully, etc., etc. Use my signature stamp on it and send it off. You're really going to send that letter? Well, you said it was my duty to as a public servant. But she's liable to take it seriously. As seriously as I take the information that money grows on trees. <laughs> Come on, boys, let's eat. <laughs> but we used all our milk and cream for breakfast. Oh, well, then I guess there's no use my barring a cup of oatmeal. No, it's not very good without milk, is it? No. Say, I, I was wondering why you put them bridal veils on your tree. It's too early for frosting. Well, it? It, it's to protect them against uh, insects and, and birds and things. Mm. They're very delicate. What kind did you say they was? Kai? Mm. Well, they're a, a sort of... A, they're a kind of mint. Oh, isn't it a gorgeous day? Jan! Oh, Cliff, that must be Ralph. Would you let him in? Let him in yourself. I've got to do my homework. I've not dressed yet. Now go on. Cliff, answer the doorbell. Cliff, do this. Cliff, don't do that. There ought to be a law against women. Mommy and... She ain't ready yet. What do you want to bother with girls for, anyway? Oh, no bother at all, pal. None at all. Oh, Ralph, I'm not ready yet. You go on and talk to Father. You know. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, maybe a little bother. You'll find out soon enough. Not me, chum. My, you look pretty. Oh, evening, Mr. Baxter. Ralph. I suspect that my daughter will look even prettier. Yeah, I'm sure she will, sir. Ralph, will you excuse me? Uh, turn around just, uh, just a minute. There's a little uh, something here. Oh, okay. now think nothing of it. I used to rent wine from the same place. <laughs> well, your date may take a little time. You better sit down. Oh, 
Thank you, sir. How are things down at the bank? Oh, swell. Yeah, I... I uh, got promoted today. You did? I'm the mortgage and loans department now. Oh? I got a raise in pay, too. Well, congratulations. I, uh... I I've been thinking that, uh... Well, I... With what I'll be uh, getting now, I could afford a, a small place, and I've already got a little money saved up to start uh, furnishing it with. And I thought that if, if you might... With Ralph, uh, Ralph... Uh... Yeah, it's all right with me if it's uh, okay with Diane. You... Uh, that, uh, that is what uh, you were yes, saying. Sir. Well, yes, that's sir. What you meant, huh? Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thanks very much. Uh, uh, Diane doesn't have to finish college, does she? College? Not as far as I'm concerned, no. Good. Of course, sir, uh, her mother did. You'd never notice it with a naked eye. <laughs> I... Uh, uh... Well? How do I look? You'll do very well indeed. Thanks, Dad. Oh, thanks, Dad. Oh, it's lovely. Oh, oh Mother! Mother! I'm here. I'm here. I was just out in the yard. Oh, it's... Such a beautiful night. Oh, Polly, uh, congratulate on the engaged. Uh, Ralph! Well, well, Diane and I have been working on you for a whole year. Oh, but it's the truth. <laughs> oh, dear, you look lovely. You'll be the prettiest girl at the oh. desk. Well, I guess we'd better run along. Good night, Mother. Don't wait up for me. Oh, good night, good dear. Night, dear. Goodbye, children. Have, Have a good fun. time. We sure will. And Ralph, take good care of her. Yeah, I will. Good, good night. night. Good night. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Oh, those sweet babies. Oh, no, 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 honey. Honey, listen. We were just about their age when we got married, hmm? Well, we? we managed to grow up, didn't we? Oh, yes, dear, of course we did. But if I had it all to do over again, I'd never wear blue. I'd wear white lace, and that's exactly what Diane's going to wear. Let's see. We church wedding and we'll have the reception here and we'll put up a tent in the backyard in case it rains and the bridesmaids all in taffeta pastel shades do we need ushers honey honey look you see custom has it the father of the bride foots the bills although custom evades the question as to where the poor guy gets the money oh, money don't you ever worry about anything but money yes yes i do i i worry about you and the kids and our future uh, right now, I, uh, I am thinking about money because you are going to be handling ours for the next month all by yourself. You see, this Saturday, the firm is sending me to Baltimore on a job. You mean you'll be away for a whole month? Uh, honey, I know it's going to be tough on both of us, but uh, uh, this could lead to something. You know, this Baltimore outfit's one of our biggest clients. Now, if they like me, this could be the opening wedge and setting up for myself. So don't worry about it. Worry? Well, what for? Oh, Phil, I have a wonderful idea. By the time you get back, the kids will be ready to get married, and they'll be going off of their honeymoon, and we'll go, too. With them? Oh, of course not. We'll go on our second honeymoon with Midge and Flip. Miami should be just lovely about that time. Or the California desert. You've always wanted to go there. Or Hawaii. I'll make some coffee. Uh, 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 make some sense, too, while you're at it. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Philip Baxter. If you only knew how much sense I was making, the little hair you have left would stand on end. Well, well let me tell you something, Polly Baxter. Uh, I kept it a secret up to now. The real reason I married you... Oh? Not because you were pretty. And not because you aroused certain ardors in me. And not for your money, heavens knows. You didn't have any. I married you for your brains. Mm -hmm. They disturbed me. They still disturb me more than ever. That's supposed to be sarcasm. Well, for your information, in case you're interested, I have more brains in my head than most people have in their little fingers. That I give you.
quite right. Don't expect me to write every day because I'll be too busy, but you'll get a letter at least once a week. Is that train late? Are you listening? Of course, dear. You said you'd write every day, but I don't think you should. You'll be too busy. Hey, are you glad to see me go? What a thing to say. Well, considering this is our first real separation since we've been married, you, you seem awfully unconcerned. But it's only for a month, and I think the change will be so good for you. Where's your handkerchief? And then, as you said, it may lead to something. Well, I, I sure hope so. And you know, I just have a hunch it might, sweetie. Dear, uh, what time is it? I want to get to the bank before it closes. Well, it's only a few minutes after 10. The bank's barely open. Oh, my expense check. That reminds me. You did get it cashed, didn't you? Cashed? Oh, how silly of me. Of course, I have it right here. One hundred dollars. <laughs> Why all fives and tens? Well, what's the difference? It's money, isn't it? <laughs> it does give an illusion of prosperity. Oh, there it is. No, honey. No bargains, no auctions, no unnecessary stuff. Keep your eye on that budget while I'm going. Oh, you'll be surprised how well I'll do. Good. Goodbye, dear. <laughs> Goodbye. Seventeen hundred and forty, fifty. Seventeen hundred and sixty, seventy, seventy-five, seventeen hundred and eighty. That pays off the mortgage in full. Well. I had a little windfall. Windfall? It looks more like a hurricane. Mm. But I'll bet I know exactly where you got this dough, Mrs. Baxter. You do? You've been holding out in the old man, haven't you? A few bucks here and there out of the budget. Every woman does it. You want to know how I deduce that? I'm dying to know. Uh, because they're all fives and tens. If you tried to hold out bigger sums, you'd have gotten suspicious. <laughs> you know, Ralph, I'm awfully glad Diane's going to marry you instead of somebody else. <laughs> Thank you. And let's see, I just have to have the house painted, and I can't make up my mind whether to have the picket fence repaired or buy a new one. I think a new one is more economical in the long run. And I think Midge and Flip should have a television set. All their friends have them. And you better take it easy. You can't grow this kind of cabbage, you know. Mm -hmm. Don't you worry about that. I have a green thumb. Everything is fine now, Mrs. Baxter. What do we do with him, boss? Get him out of here. We'll dump him in the arroyo. You.
Agriculture, Bureau of Internal Revenue, U.S. Treasury Department. U.S. Treasury Department for what? If you are in possession of trees which grow the currency of this country. Hmm. Cuttings from those trees. Oh. in jail. In jail? Along with 20 drunks. Phil, you weren't drinking. Drinking? <laughs> That's only a misdemeanor. I'm a big time operator. I got jugged for passing counterfeit dough. Where could you have picked up counterfeit? Money from that expense check that you cashed for me. We moved the couch, huh? As long as I live, I'll never understand it. Bank must have slipped up somewhere. Generally, they check their currency pretty carefully. Uh, we had three kids when I left home. We still oh, have them, don't we? Heaven, they're simply fine. Phil, tell me just what happened. Well, my last night in town, I took Anderson. That's one of the big bosses out to dinner. Yes. Uh, uh, not that nice bunch there, too. Darn nice. I think something important is going to come of my association. That's good, with... dear. But, but uh, tell me about the counterfeit money. Well, uh, we went to some flush joint that he knew about, and I put on the dog. Good for business. We had drinks, steaks, asparagus, roquefort, brandy, the works. And uh, then he had to leave. He had some sort of date somewhere, and uh, I had about two hours till train time, so uh, I, I just sat there and had myself another brandy and well, joined I'm life. I'm glad you did, dear, but go on, please. Well, so I, I called the waiter over, asked him for my check. Mm -hmm. Pretty steep, almost 20 bucks. But Mood I was in, I didn't mind. Because once in a blue moon, a man is entitled to paint the town a little red. I... Hey, how come you had the house painted? Well, I'll tell you about that later, Phil. Please go on. Well, I, I pulled out my uh, wallet and I took out two tens and a five. Darndest thing I ever saw. What? One of the tens broke right in half. The second was kind of uh, curled around the edges and I tried to, to straighten it out and it, it, it crumbled into a thousand pieces. The five dollar bill, that was really something. It was, it curled up like a kitten and, 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 and kind of granulated. Granulated? I, I pulled out my wallet again because I had to pay the man off. It was full of dust, ashes, and crumbling bits of bills. So, <laughs> since I couldn't pay them, they called the cops and they marched me off to the clink. Anderson sprung me this morning. <clears throat> Here, now, I'll, I'll show you. <sighs> Should be around 60 bucks there. Now, if you don't lose any of that and get an envelope and put it in it, I'll take it down to the bank in the morning and see if I can't get them to replace it. Hey, what have you done to this place? Uh, new drapes, aren't they? Yes, dear. Diane and I made them. Uh, well, what about... Uh, Phil, you must be awfully tired. Why don't you take a shower and a nice nap? A nice long nap. I am. Good, I won't even I... call you for supper. Uh, I think I will. I'll... You know what that stuff reminds me of? Dead leaves. Now you tell me how that can happen to money.
Yes, sir. Ralph, just look at those. Oh, what are they, Mr. Slimish? Counterfeit? The markings on those still intact seem genuine. They've been coming in from all over town, and all of them fives and tens. It's very peculiar. You agree? Oh, yes, indeed, sir. Hmm. Then how do you account for $1,780 more of this uh, peculiar money having been wrapped in your bank strap? My strap? Well, I, I don't know, sir. They certainly weren't in this condition when I got them. I'm not inferring they were. I'm merely trying to find out who gave them to you. Well, I don't remember. I handled come quite a few come, transactions. Come, come, Ralph. Obviously, someone must have given you that sum and repayment of a loan or a mortgage. Surely you ought to be able to remember who gave you $1,780 in fives and tens. $1,780? Whoever passed this money should be questioned and dealt with. No. No, sir. I... I can't remember. I'm disappointed in you, Ralph. A poor memory is a bad recommendation for advancement in the banking profession. Well, I'll send this to the Bureau of Engraving and Printing in Washington for an analysis. And I hope a replacement, for your sake. Uh, is that all, sir? Uh, no, not quite. Until we hear from Washington, you'd better not handle money. Starting tomorrow, I'm putting you back on the books. Whoops, but that was my job when I started, sir. Do I get my present salary? Well, scarcely. In loans and mortgages, you were department head. In bookkeeping, you're not. Well, sir, then I can't get married. You see, we plan to this month. The best laid plans and so forth and so forth. Now, good morning, Ralph. Yes, sir. You know, John, we might be doing the boy an injustice. It's quite possible the administration is trying to save money by printing it on inferior paper. By Jove, I'm going to send this directly to the Treasury Department. With a sharp note. There's a limit. Washing machine, page and four. Wallpaper, page. Painting, page. Trapes. Polly, I want to talk to you. Not now, dear. There's something I must see to on the back porch. It'll keep. I hope so. I want to know... I what... can't tell you. You don't know what I was going to ask? I do, where I got the money to pay off all our bills and get the house painted and a new fence and a television set and drapes and slip covers and everything, and I just can't tell you. I got it honestly and legally. Only you'd say it wasn't. Did you want me to stop spending it or give it back? If you came by money honestly, why should I object? Because you're just too, too ethical and righteous and, and wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Polly, what's going on? I, I just don't get this. We've been married now almost 20 years. We've had no, much I serious differences. I just can't tell you. I just can't. Things are happening which I didn't expect. And you've got to give me time to work them out somehow. And when I do, if I Well, now, can't... if anything is going wrong, then we have to work them out together, just the same as we always have. Now, Polly, I demand to know where you got that money. Well? Go away. Just simply go away and leave me alone. I don't want you. Diane, I didn't say your mother was a thief. He did, Mother. He did say... I didn't. I only said... He said that you gave him some bad money and that that's why he lost his job. I didn't lose it. I got and the And now he says he can't marry me. I only said since Please, I'm getting less salary, we have to... Our engagement, which is just simply fine with me. It's just the way I want it. Only he needn't call my mother a counterfeiter in order to do it. Ralph, just what is this now about my wife giving you bad money? Well, sir, I'm not going to stay here and listen to him say it again. Diane. And you needn't shut me up, Father. I'm too old to be bullied. And if you're going to let him stay in this house after the things he said about your wife, you're, you're just like him. I... Go ahead, Ralph. Uh, what's this all about now? I'm not trying to break off our engagement, Mr. Baxter. I love Di. And I didn't say you were what she said. I only said the money you gave me in payment of the mortgage was sort of funny. Uh, you mean the installment? On the oh, no, sir. No, sir. Mrs. Baxter paid it off in full. Yeah, and it was wrapped in my currency strap, and the money was no good. What was wrong with it? It... Well, it crumbled. Crumbled? And... sort of granulated? Yes, sir. I never saw anything like it before. Were they all five and ten dollar bills? How did you know? I have moments of clairvoyance, Ralph. 
Uh, now, quit worrying. This will all work out, I hope. And don't worry about Diane either. She'll come around. Good night, boy. Uh, gosh, Mrs. Baxter, I'm sorry if I opened my big mouth and started something. You know, if anything happened to me and Diane, and if this wasn't going to be my family, I just couldn't take it. Would you take these? Good night. Well, Polly, don't you think it's about time that you told me where you got this unhappy money? It grows on our trees. I didn't get that. It does, dear, on the trees I bought from Mr. McGonagall. And I guess what's happening now is that the bills are drying up. After all, it's only a plant. You said yourself it reminded you of dead leaves. I don't think they're quite dead. Anyway, I'm trying to revive them. Come, I'll show you. Oh, I know exactly how you feel, Phil. When I found out the trees grew money, it was a shock to me, too. But you get used to the idea. I did. You're right to the Department of Agriculture again. They told me what fertilizer to use, and it did help. And now I'm going to ask them if there isn't some preservative to keep the money alive. They should know something. After all, that's why we pay taxes, isn't it? Uh, dear, prepare yourself for a surprise. You've never seen anything like this before. Ah, there. Oh, it's been stripped. Something's happened. Oh, I don't understand. Phil, they were both... First thing in the morning, and you tell him everything. No. It, tell him the whole no. story, just like you no, told me. No, Phil, I will not be your friend, Dr. Rich. I know what he is. He's a psychiatrist. No, 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 honey, honey, baby. I'm not crazy. And it seems to me after all the years we've been married, you know that. And you know I don't lie. No. A big thing. Does. You're making it very tough for us, Bowen. I... Oh, well, you're not doing me a lot of good either, you know. And if you go on this way, we may have to get tough with you. Where are you going to send me? Atlanta? Could be. There was a page torn out of his ledger. By someone in a hurry, looks like. You know anything about this, Bowen? Tearing pages out of ledgers in all my years of banking. In order to hold him for questioning, you have to prefer a charge until we can take it up with Washington. Well, I'm sorry to interrupt, but there's a woman outside who wants to open an account. Well, then open it. But she wants to deposit a little over a thousand dollars. And in fives and tens. Here, I brought some. I knew you'd want to check them. Who is this woman? Where is she? At the first window. There she is. Here, dear, what's wrong? Mother, I've just seen Ralph. He's in jail. Oh, no, dear. What did he do? He kept his mouth shut, that's what. Federal men came from Washington, and he didn't tell them about the money you gave him. Oh. He's protecting you, and they may keep him in prison for the rest of his life. Oh, Mother, how can I have a wedding with my groom in jail? No, 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 baby. No, they're not going to keep Ralph in jail. I, I won't let them. Well, well, what can you do? I, I'm going to get him out. Right now. And don't you worry. And Diane. 
If I don't come back, you explain to your father. I'm Mrs. Philip Baxter. I live at 814 Larrabee. And I've come to talk to you about Ralph Bowen. You're detaining him here, aren't you? Yeah, we got him. Well, you, you must let him go at once. He's not guilty. I am. I gave him that money. The phony, though? Oh, it isn't really phony. It just happens to be dying. You see, I didn't know that was going to happen when I gave it to him. I'd quite forgotten it was a growing thing. You'd forgotten what was a growing thing, lady? The money. It grows on my trees. Another nut. Oh, I know it's hard to believe. My own husband doesn't believe me. But it's true. Look, lady, I think maybe you don't feel so good. Why don't you go home and lie down and put a cold, damp cloth on your head or take an aspirin, maybe drink a cup of black coffee if that's what's causing it. I am not crazy and I don't drink. I demand that you release Ralph Bourne. Madam, beat it. Uh, beat it. Oh. Pardon me. Excuse me. Riley, you've been holding out on the press, which means we'll misspell your name for a full year. Now, what about this guy you're holding for passing bad money? He didn't do it, she said. She? The dame that just left here. It's her fault, she says. Seems like she grows this stuff. What? That's what the woman says. It grows on her trees. My name is McGuire from the Press Herald. Oh, we already subscribed to your but paper. No, nothing like that. I'm a reporter. We bumped into one another at the police station, remember? No. Well, anyway, they told me a very interesting story about you having some trees which grow money. Are, are those the wealthy little numbers out there? If you've come here to ridicule me as the police did, I'll say... Oh, thank... no, Mrs. Baxter, of course not. You know how cops are. They're cynical. But I'm a reporter, and it's my job to keep an open mind. I suppose you tell me all about it, huh? Well, I was just going to make myself some coffee. Would you like some? Coffee? Any time. Now, uh, let's see. I take it you did something like this. You planted a $10 bill, and then one day you went out into the yard, and there you saw a tiny, tender green shoot. That wasn't how it happened at all, and I think you'd better go, Mr. McGuire, because I see you insist upon being funny. Besides, I haven't any coffee. Very serious to me, and I'm terribly, terribly fed up with people thinking that I'm a drunkard or a mental case. Oh, now, Mrs. Baxter, you got me all wrong. I not only believe your story, but I found some coffee for you. Suppose you and I have a little cup of java and a little talk, and you give me the exact lowdown. Good huh? day, Mr. McGuire. The letters! Oh, I knew they were here somewhere! All right, you humorous. Read this. And this. And this one. Where's your phone? In the hall. What are you going to do? Never mind. Come along. Right there on the table. What are you going to do? Call Washington. I feel that you believe me, Mr. McGuire. What's more to the point is a lot of important people believe you. Well, that's what I've been trying uh, to say. City desk, quick. The newspaper? Uh, this is McGuire. I'm at 813 oh. Larrabee. No, 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 814, Mr. McGuire. Uh, uh, 814 Larrabee. You, you I want two photographers over here right away and hold the front Just, page open. I got the greatest story of the year. Tell him, Mr. Hulk. No, not a murder. What's a little murder oh. compared to this? Bill. Never mind what it is. Get those guys over here in the double. I found them. Yes. They were in the coffee can all the yes. time. Yes. Hey, you read them? They were in the coffee okay. can. It's about some letters that are going to set this country on its ear. Yes. Okay, step on it. Mrs. Baxter, I love you. I'm going to go outside and wait. Hey, who are you? This is my husband. Still, this is Mr. McGuire from the Press Herald. Hi. Don't lose those, because this story isn't just for our local sheet. It belongs to the world. Right, this 
off the trees in the back? No. They're from the trees out front. There are trees too, ain't they? Get your souvenirs! Get your branches from the trees! Well, I suppose I could endorse it. All right, you send your photographer right over. No, no, I have my own spade. Well, that's Bill, done. the phone hasn't stopped once all morning. People asking me to do all sorts of things. Did you know that Flip and Mitch were outside practicing petty larceny on your public? Oh, dear. You think I should stop them? Why, I don't know. You're the one who set the precedence. It's up to you. Where's Diane? She's in jail. Jail? What's she done? Uh, dear, no, no, no. She's waiting for Ralph. They're going to let him out today on bail. Look, Polly, this is no good. Our children have gone haywire. Our house has become a maker for morons. What's left of our house, I mean. Because, you know, that picket fence is going to be trampled flat any minute now. I told you you were starting something. Where do we go from here? Never mind. I know where we're going. I'll take Ralph's old cell. You can double up with Mrs. Pryor. Soon find out. Where are the trees? Why are they going around to the back? I suspect they're going to look at your trees. Well, what right have they? Didn't you recognize the gentleman leading the parade? No. Your favorite correspondent, Murchison of the Treasury. Oh. Well. <laughs> Dr. Burroughs, the whole thing is an obvious hoax. These trees don't even look capable of growing leaves let alone money. Well, that, that can be explained, Mr. Murchison. Yes, they, they're probably deciduous, which means that they would have lost their foliage this late in the year. And not only that, gentlemen, but we were robbed by my neighbor. You must have read about it. I'm Polly Baxter, Mr. Murchison. This is a great honor. May I present my husband? Carolman, agriculture. How, How do you do? do? Leatherby, internal revenue. How Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Dr. Burroughs, botanical research. Doctor, I really feel as though I... I, I think the newspapers have been dreadfully cruel, gentlemen. I think your answering my letters was very thoughtful and very courteous. Mrs. Baxter, be honest. Have you been playing a practical joke on us? Why, I wouldn't think of doing such a thing. You actually believe these trees grow money? I know they do. Why else would I have written you about them? Curious. <laughs> very curious. <laughs> In all my experience, I've never run across this particular species. Uh, Mrs. Baxter, would you say that they're nucifrous or vaxiferous? Or perhaps coniferous. Oh, I don't think they belong to any of those families, Doctor. If anything, they're more floriferous. Uh, you see, the buds were more like tulips, and when they open inside each corolla, curl up around the stamen. If you so, don't mind, let's get down to business. Bob, will you get one of yes, All right, Mr. Crowley. Just put your hand on the hand. 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 One of Mr. Burroughs. No pictures, please. Nice smile, Mr. Baxter. Do you hold the glass on, boys? Do you hold the glass on? Thank you. Thank you. Well, as I was saying, Doctor, inside each corolla, curled up around the stamen, well, on this tree, $10 bill. Yes. And on this one, $5 bill. Oh, fascinating, Mrs. Baxter. Simply fascinating. Mrs. Baxter, we've got to put a stop to all this, and you're the only one who can do it. I? How? By issuing a public statement admitting that it was all a deliberate hoax. But I couldn't do that. It wouldn't be the truth. And besides, if she did, gentlemen, it would be an admission that she'd pass bad money, which is a criminal act, I believe. A felony. Yes, ma'am. Ten to twenty years in federal prison. Oh, my goodness. And are you gentlemen going to jail with her? <laughs> what? What are you driving at? What do you mean? Well, I mean that all of you not only condoned the act, but you encouraged it, which makes you accessories and equally culpable. 
And I'm not going to let you make Mrs. Baxter your scapegoat. Mr. Baxter, sir, have you actually seen money on those trees? No, but uh, my wife, and, and I've had her nearly 20 years and should know her by now, is an honest woman. And if she says her trees grow money, her trees grow money. But, my dear sir, it sounds like a... like a... Like a wish come true. And that's actually what it was. We needed money so badly at the time, remember, Phil? And I believe if you wish long enough and strong enough, your wishes do come true. And that's what makes life so full of wonder. Mrs. Baxter, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about wonder. Personally, I wouldn't want to live in a world without it. And the world does have it, you know. It's just full of it. Except people forget. Or when they grow up and meet it, they call it a fake. Now, wouldn't it be wonderful if on your birthday, instead of ties and socks and things, you got three wishes, and they all came true every year on your birthday? I'll uh, write to our congressman about it, dear. Gentlemen, ge oh, gentlemen, it happens only rarely, and they seldom come to full fruition, but this one should mature sufficiently to let us know what kind it is. What kind what is, Doctor? Oh, I'm sorry, I thought I'd mentioned it. Mrs. Baxter, your $10 tree has a bud on it. Doctor, a bud! A money bud? Uh, well, I don't know yet. We'll just have to wait and find out. Well, pick the Open button. it, man. Lance it. Oh, no, 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 no. Much too early. We can do that in about five days from now. But in the meantime, we don't know how the weather's going to be, so I'll want a pup tent. A pup tent? You're going to put a tent over them? Oh, no, indeed, sir. I'm going to sleep with them. For five days? <laughs> stay mild like this for a few days. Oh, it will. Yeah. It just must. Ned, Ned! Get in the house right away. You'll be drenched. Doctor, don't you want this coat? Thank you, Mrs. Baxter, dear. <laughs> this will be a great help. Oh, Doctor. Yeah, I'm afraid it's moribund in extremis. What's that mean in English? that the bud is dying. Oh, Phil. so quickly, gentlemen. Come in, come in. I understand you have a statement for us, Mr. Murchison. Definitely, my boy. We have a very conclusive statement for you. Gentlemen, the bud has proven to be a washout, which not only vindicates us, but takes this case out of the realm of abracadabra and makes it instead the willful passing of bad money. Now, I spoke to the Attorney General this morning and asked him to take immediate action against Mrs. Baxter. He told me that he... As a matter of fact, we're going downtown this afternoon and picking up you, Ray. Excuse me, please. Why, the bedroom is going to be perfectly dreamy. You know, baby blue orchid, the crisscross tie, the truffles, and we're going to have a chintz bed spread with a double flan. A double flan? Oh, my goodness, that's fine. Ralph, we better hurry. Goodbye, Mother. I'll see you later. Excuse me. Diane, put on your galoshes and take your raincoat with you. Yes, Mother, I will. Oh, young love, it's wonderful, isn't it? Well, now, I'm sure you all want some coffee. My, what a day. Mr. Murchison? No, thank you. Oh, Dippy, I have it, Mrs. Baxter. Well, of course not. Oh, Doctor. wonderful day. Simply wonderful day. Oh. What's wonderful about it? Oh, something quite miraculous has happened. I've never seen anything like it before. Like what? Well, as I say... <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
Sidus, Sidus. Get on with it, man. Get on with it. Well, as you all know, it was terribly cold last night, and the bud was in very bad shape, quite hopeless. In fact, I couldn't sleep for worrying about it. So I plucked it, and all night I kept it with me here. So I, I suppose it was the warmth of my body underneath the blankets that did it. Did what? Revived it, sir. Brought it back to life. Oh. Is it... Is it a money bud? Uh, haven't looked yet. Well, let's open it. Murchison, this is the doctor's show. Oh, thank you, Mr. Baxter. humility. What do you mean, if necessary? Mrs. Baxter, ma'am, when I wrote you all that you'd only have to pay the capital gains tax, I wasn't aware of the exact situation. I'm afraid now you'll have to pay the regular tax. Well, it's not due until March 15th, is it? Well, no. Oh, we should have a fine new crop by then, huh? We'll pay in cash. Mr. Baxter, as you know, this money isn't legal. Now, that's what I would have thought if I hadn't read your letter to my wife. Finley, I think we can appropriate those trees by law. I quote you from Article 5 of the Bill of Rights. Nor shall private property be taken for public use without just compensation. Oh, naturally, we'll pay. Well, we'd be glad to. Now, how much do you want? What do you pay with? Money? <laughs> we grow our own. It seems to me, sir, that it is your patriotic duty to give up those trees so that we can destroy them. They're a menace to the economy of our country. I never intended keeping them. And I've never approved using the money. And my wife will confirm that. Then we can have them? Uh, just a minute, gentlemen. You've pushed my wife around, and I don't like that. You've called her names, too. And so have I. I'm sorry, dear. I'm sorry, too, Mrs. Baxter. My apologies. And my apologies, Include too. Include me in that. Gentlemen. Now, shall we go outside and give them the trees? Do they have to be destroyed? Couldn't they be planted somewhere where, where no one could get to them and they could go on growing? It seems to me you're killing something very wonderful and very special. Believe me, Mrs. Baxter, it is absolutely necessary in the interest of national safety. Well, then do it quickly. I don't want to see them go. All right, gentlemen. Oh, wait. Uh, that, um, oh, what did you call it, Phil? That, that just compensation. The money I spent will have to be replaced and... Well, we just haven't got it. We'll take care of that, of course. Uh, have you any idea how much money you, you spent? Of course, $2,904. You asked me to make a list, remember? That'll be uh, $968 each, boys. Oh, wait, I, I forgot to add in the cost of the trees. $10. Oh, yes, the, the original investment. Uh, 334 more a piece. Uh, uh, $971.34 total, gentlemen. My husband's a certified public accountant. In business for himself now. We'll have Dr. Burroughs prepare the trees for shipment to Washington. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Baxter! Oh, Mrs. Baxter! Oh, quick, quick! Outside, outside! Oh, Dr. Oh, Mrs. Baxter, dear! Oh, oh so be careful! It's all my fault. I went to the hotel to write my report to the Institute, and I quite forgot what the weather was like outside. So, you see... afraid so, Mrs. Baxter, dear. Oh, doctor, my poor darling trees. Uh, Mrs. Polly Baxter? Yes? Oh, yes. Uh, Mrs. Polly Baxter? Yes. Sign, please. Well, boys, perhaps last night's frost saved us a lot of trouble. Goodbye, Mrs. Baxter. It's been very nice going. I'll send you a Goodbye, Mrs. Baxter. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. I've never seen anything like this before in all my life. Kelly, what's in this thing? Now, what do you mean you don't know what's in it? Dear, I said I bought it at a blind auction for only two dollars and forty cents, and that's oh. terribly, terribly cheap for. For what? For what? Well, I don't know, dear. We'll see in a minute. 
Honestly, Polly, look at all that junk. Well, now, all it needs is, is a little cleaning up and, and straightening out. And throwing away Easter bonnet. Well, of course, it's for only $2.40. You can't expect it. Ooh, something useful at last. A cheese knife. Oh, Phil, please don't tease me today. I'm not teasing you, honey. I know how you feel about those trees. Really, Polly, it was all for the best. Wonder and enchantment and all the rest of it are just fine, but they don't fit in with everyday life. I wonder. See you at supper, honey. Oh. 